Pedro Pascal has had a string of successful shows that us fans can watch to keep us entertained. So today we're talking about the top 10 Pedro Pascal TV shows that brought in millions. Starting off with number 10, The Mandalorian. Pedro Pascal has earned a reputation as an actor that brings an impressive mix of subtle emotion and larger than life charisma to any role that he steps into. The majority of his shows have been critically acclaimed too, helping highlight Pascal's talents as an actor. The first live action Star Wars television series, The Mandalorian, debuted in 2019 on Disney+. Plus. From a galaxy far, far away, Pedro Pascal's performance as Din Djarin, a lone bounty hunter, who forms a life-altering bond with a mysterious alien creature initially referred to as the child offers great emotional heart. Pascal's powerful performance helped his Mandalorian character become one of the most beloved characters in the entire Star Wars franchise despite the fact that he rarely spoke. The stoic demeanor of his character and the heartwarming design and characteristics of Grogu's puppetry make for an engaging viewing performance. Because of their chemistry, viewers can't help but want the duo to stick together in the fight against the Empire's remnants. Number 9, a lot of people's favorite, Game of Thrones. It's perhaps fitting that the show that helped Pedro Pascal reach new heights in his career has received the most acclaim. Pascal played Oberyn Martell for seven episodes in the fourth season of the show in 2014, making him one of the show's most beloved characters during that time. From the Kingdom of Drone, Oberyn is a quick-witted, passionate prince who is equally passionate about vengeance, women, and men as he is about the Lannisters. When trying to get to the mountain to confess to the passing away of his sister and her children, Oberyn Martell's luck quickly runs out in a duel. He gets his eyes gouged out and his head crushed into pieces. Additionally, Pedro Pascal can boast a difficult achievement for Game of Thrones. He holds the title of arguably the most gruesome passing away in the show's history, securing the legacy of his character in the global phenomenon known for its extreme violence. On to number eight, Narcos. According to Observer, Narcos was the most watched Netflix original series of its time when it was released in August 2015. Based on real life events, the drama follows American Drug Enforcement Administration, DEA agents in Colombia as they pursue Pablo Escobar, a legendary drug lord. Javier Pena, a DEA agent charged with pursuing the Met Median and the Cali cartels was played by Pascal. Pascal first appeared in a leading role in the Netflix original series. It is fascinating to watch his performance as Peña, a rogue agent who frequently defies Department of Justice regulations to advance his case against cartels. As the unpredictable plot develops, his tough as leather character with a secret soft spot keeps viewers hooked. Nurse 7, Nurse Jackie. One of Pedro Pascal's guest roles was Nurse Jackie which he played in the 2010 episode titled Twitter, before becoming embroiled in controversy when Nurse Jackie allows his son to walk away with a false diagnosis, Pascal plays Steve, a concerned father of a young boy with a mysterious respiratory condition similar to cystic fibrosis. Throughout its six year run, Nurse Jackie earned multiple Golden Globe and Emmy Awards for its continued popularity. One illustration of the drama's depiction of the numerous flaws in the medical system and the devastating effects of Nurse Jackie's addiction on the workplace is Pascal's performance. Number six, without a trace. In 2016, Pascal only appeared in one episode of this crime drama series, Candy. He played Kyle, a stranger who appears to be friendly but quickly turns violent in order to get money. While working as an undercover exotic dancer at a nightclub, his character piques the interest of special agent Elena Delgado. One of any roles he has played as antagonists throughout his career, Pascal's appearance on the CBS series is no exception. He played villains in major blockbusters like Kingsman, after appearing on the show, The Equalizer 2, The Golden Circle, and Wonder Women 1984. On to number five, Lights Out. Patrick Lights Leary, a retired world champion boxer, was the subject of a short-lived FX series called Lights Out. Pascal played Omar the Armenian Avenger Assyrian, an ambitious young middleweight boxer who loses a big fight Lights has bet on and trained him for for the first four episodes. The sports show was canceled because of low viewership, but critics loved it and think of it as a hidden gem in the genre. Omar's involvement in the gambling failure that resulted from his lost fight helped bring attention to the negative aspects of sports and how they are made money. 
On to number four, Carrie Matheson, played by Claire Danes, is a CIA officer assigned to the counterterrorism unit in Homeland. The fact that Matheson was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and how it affected her role in counterterrorism helped make the show one of the biggest shows of the decade. Pascal played David Portillo, the majority counsel who scrutinizes Carrie's dedication to the CIA's operations in the first episode of the popular Showtime drama's third season. Pascal played a crucial role in the aftermath of Carrie's perceived failure to stop a terrorist attack on the CIA despite only appearing in one episode. Number three, The Good Wife. The Good Wife was a popular political legal drama with a strong ensemble cast that included Pedro Pascal in the first and second seasons. Before spawning The Good Fight spinoff, the show was one of the biggest of the 2010s, ran for seven years, and won five Emmy Awards. Pa Pascal portrayed Nathan Landry, an assistant state attorney who fought Alicia Florick, the protagonist, in her efforts to free her husband from prison. Pascal played a frequently recurring role in a multi-season arc due to his well-liked performance and crucial role in the show's first season. Number two, NYPD Blue. NYPD Blue is a long-running police drama that gave a number of actors guest roles before they became major stars like David Schwimmer and Lucy Liu. This includes Pedro Pascal, who played the arrogant young goth-turned-killer cult leader Shane Dio Morrissey in a 2001 episode. The first of many police procedurals Pascal has appeared in was was NYPD Blue. Later, he played villainous criminals in all three main Law & Order series. In Dio, his unique acting abilities and enigmatic charisma shine through, providing a glimpse into a promising acting career in which he will play multiple antagonistic roles. And finally, on to number one, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Pedro Pascal's appearance in the cult classic Supernatural series Buffy the Vampire Slayer is unlike any other actor's performance in a major television series. Although Pascal's role on Buffy was only in one episode, it was a fun one for a young actor just starting out in the industry in 1999. The episode gives him the name Pedro Balmaqueda, which is his father's surname. Eddie, played by Pascal, is a jovial adolescent boy with whom Buffy Summers forms a bond as she navigates her first few days at college. Eddie seems like a nice guy who might be Buffy's boyfriend, but then she disappears from campus after being turned by a group of vampires. Before she strikes him with her stake, the new Eddie tries to attack Buffy. The cult 1990s show has a large following and continues to have an impact to this day, and Pascal's passing away by Buffy's infamous stake is as iconic a guest appearance as one can get. Pascal's early television venture could not have come in a more beloved show of its time. Since his role as Javier Peña, an agent in Narcos when he was born in Chile, the actor has been adored by those who have followed him for a long time. However, a new wave of Pedro mania has begun as fans of The Last of Us are just starting to notice the charismatic actor. This particular breed of confidence might appear to be self-aggrandizing, as if it came from the Matt Healy and John Mayer school of forced charisma. If you haven't heard of Pascal before, however, Pascal possesses genuine charisma, which fortunately for us as charm-starved citizens is abundant. For a number of years, the 47-year-old Chilean actor has been a fan favorite among select groups of devoted followers. In Narcos, one of Netflix's first originals in 2015. As the smooth-talking, tight-fitting DEA agent Javier Peña, they may have fallen for him. Or as Oberyn Martell, a graceful talker in a billowing robe who only lasted a melancholy amount of time on HBO's Game of Thrones but gave enough of a performance for people to remember. Since Pascal first donned his helmet as the Mandalorian in one of the most successful Star Wars prequels since while the prequels, others have been calling him daddy. For a lot of people, the Pascal calculation is taking place right now. In his most recent role, he has been playing Joel Miller on television for the past three weeks. In the apocalyptic thriller series The Last of Us, which is an adaptation of the immensely popular video game of the same name, this is yet another reluctant father figure and the protagonist. Pascal became everyone's favorite subject as soon as the show started airing. His performance as Miller has received high praise, attracting even more viewers who are swooning over his attractiveness and the behind the scenes interviews with him. Although this feels different, it could be argued that he has always been so beloved and that people are just enjoying having him in a role where his face is not covered for 95% of the runtime. It won't take long for some kind of Pascal to appear on your Twitter or Instagram feed. A picture of him sitting with the Murray Bartlett, a former The White Lotus cast member and guest star in The Last of Us Episode 3, earlier this week sent internet users into a 
frenzy. In addition, it received hundreds of thousands of likes and the kind of thirsty comments that could be found in the response section too. A clip in which he evaluates who is the bigger daddy out of him and fellow actor Oscar Isaac, the two are close friends, has resurfaced and became viral sensations for the first time. In an episode, he was also recently announced as the upcoming host of SNL. In essence, we are experiencing complete pedromania. It was not always like this. Although Pascal began his career appearing in popular television shows, he was rarely given a chance to stay on. In a 1999 episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, when he was still acting under the name Petro Balmacita, he debuted with a clean shave and baby faced appearance as a tribute to his mother Veronica Pascal and also because Americans frequently had trouble pronouncing Balmacita, he adopted her name later that year. But that's all for today, thank you for watching, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more updates on your favorite celebrities and I'll catch you next time on The Rich Life.